He's had a hernia. This is, this is what it, a hernia is, a tear in the abdominal wall. Um, and uh, it's a tear, tear in the abdominal wall. So this, this guy's been hurting. Now, this may have happened in the bucket after he's dead, uh, but probably not. There's actually a staple here, right there, So which makes me to believe that he may have suffered an injury in his life, and they actually stapled, stapled, you know, stitched him up at some point. So that may, this may be a long-term, a uh, long-standing hernia that it had. Uh, so there's, there's actually a medical staple in this guy. Um, so, um, in order to go in, if you will, the goal here is I'm gonna, we're going to make an incision. We're going to start right at the tip of the groin, right at the lower part of the abdomen, and we're going to run that anteriorly all the way up until it connects to the incision uh, in the sternomastoid. Okay, so we're going to come right all the way up the external abdominal obliques uh, from the groin all, all the way up through. And of course, the, the ticket here I would suggest is not using a scalpel. Now, um, I'm going to use a pair of scissors, and if I sort of go in just lightly and cut away, this muscle here is actually quite thin. Uh, and as I cut up through it, although these scissors are awful dull, um, there we go. Uh, I want to keep this, just like when we did the other dissections in grade 11, you want to keep the point of the scissors up because you don't want to cut down through the intestines. That could get messy, if you know what I mean. All right, and that's, that wouldn't be fun for anybody. Okay, so I'm just going to cut up. Now, once I get right up to the sternum, this is where life is going to get a little tougher. And relax. Okay, it's a joke. So you can hear. Can you hear the? Listen. Well, I, just, I did it already. So you, there's a little crunch. There. Oh, I love that sound. All right. So I'm going to continue. There we go. Oh, that's a good. Then I'm going to connect it. There. There. Look at that. Connect. There we go. Okay. So. Oh, beautiful. There now, the diaphragm, because this guy's a mammal, he has a diaphragm. And so when I open him up, there's no way I cannot open him up without tearing the diaphragm. So that muscle, the diaphragmatic muscle, is going to be torn when I open him up just by default. So you'll hear it. There it is there. You can see it's still together. But see it there? Right there. Mm -hmm. But as I pull, it'll tear. Okay, and that's that fine. Beautiful? Now... So I'm going to open that up as far as I can. I can see that I haven't all the way finished the ribs, so I'm just going to a couple little snips and be careful. I love it. Okay, here we go. Okay. So now I'm going to make two more incisions. Here. No, it's not the Okay. Now, in some of your cases, when you open them up, this could be, rather than clean like this, there maybe looks, looks like a, a layer of brown tissue all over it. If that's the case, then I suggest you take your tray and your mink over to the one that sinks and just rinse him internally. This guy's very clean. All right, so there's, there's, there was no internal bleeding or anything here. This is very clean. Okay, so there we can see that. There's a further wow. little tear that goes on. It's All right. Really now, again, this guy is a really good example because often there's a face cloth type tissue that completely covers the small intestines. That's called an omentum. And in this case, most of it's right up here. So that's going to have to go. Now, in some of your cases, it's, it's completely covered. But I'm gathering because this guy had his hernia, I'm gathering that th it was sort of bunched all at the top because of that. So I'm just going to remove that. So this today is going to be your biggest mink bit. You're going to want to remove this omentum. In some cases, it's brown. In some cases, it's clear and white. This is he's this guy's got a really good internal cavity. So pull that pull that back through his his hernia. Oh, look, there's this, there's the second staple right there. Okay. So we pull him back in. All right. So now we just basically need to sort of go through and do some identification. This is the liver. Okay. And it is directly below the diaphragm, which you see here. There is also a ligament right there. See that little transparent ligament that I'm pulling up? Mm -hmm. It was attached to the diaphragm before it ripped. That, uh, that li ligament is the falciform ligament. You'll see it on your sheets. So there's the falciform ligament. Um, there is a sac directly underneath the stomach, and it is J-shaped right there. That's the stomach. Okay, right there. 
Okay. Now, in this fold right here, in the J of the fold, see this fold right here? Right here, where, where it's a J. This material here, this is the pancreas. Yeah, that, that tissue right there, that's the pancreas. All right, so I'm going to go down a little further. All of this is intestine. I'm going to go down a little further. He's had some difficulties in his life. There we go, because that hernia. There's his spleen. So there's the stomach, there's the spleen, there's the intestines. I'm going to roll over here and expose underneath the intestines. And I can tell immediately that this is a little girl because what we've got here are the uterus. These are the horns of the uterus. And these two horns, because in a human, the, hu the uterus is like a kind of like a pear-shaped object where one, maybe two, eggs go in and implant, so you give birth to one or two. In her case, she has two horns. So the eggs can implant all the way along there, and when she gives birth, she'll give birth to a litter as opposed to a single one or two. Okay? So her urinary bladder, where she stores her urine, is right there. This part of the intestine is the large intestine. This is going to exit down to the rectum. So we have a urinary bladder, horns of the uterus, and we have the large intestine. Underneath the intestines on both sides, we're going to see the kidneys, and I'm going to expose the kidneys. The kidneys are typically caked up here in fat, and there's two. There's one on this side, and there should be another one buried down in here. It would be in there. And here we have the right kidney. Now, I'm not going to get much deeper because I'm going to get you to explore down here where the kidneys connect up. You're going to see that there's a renal vein, the blue one, and a renal artery, the red one. And there's also a very, very, very thin tube, and you've got to be careful not to, to destroy it, that comes down and bleeds the urine from the kidney into the bladder. And I'm going to let you find that. It's very, very slight. That's the ureter. Again, this is more of the liver. Now, the gallbladder in these guys is right between the lobes of the liver. It's a little bladder. Yeah. Right there. There's what the gall, gallbladder. Okay. There's your gallbladder. So I'll go up here. And I still haven't quite cut this enough yet. Here we have, above the diaphragm, we have the lobes of the lungs. Sandwich right in between it is the heart, which is here. Now the heart is covered in what amounts to a little baggie. And I'm actually, it's called the pericardial sac, and I'm actually going to reflect that, which means tear it. And when I tear it, you'll be able to see and remove sort of that little section. Ta-da! You'll be able to see the two ventricles of the heart and the two atria. There's one right there. You can see the separation between the ventricle and the atrium, and another on the other side, right over there. I'll let you explore that better than I just did. Now, I need to cut the rest of the rib cage, and this is where I need to be a little careful. Ryan, could you hold that and someone else with a glove hold the other leg over? Thank you. So I'm just going to cut up connect through the ribs, but try to go as shallow as possible. There. Okay. All right. Now, here I need to be a little dainty, because what I need to do is try and expose some of the circulatory system. All right. So here we have the two lungs, here and here. This <coughs> tissue here is the thymus gland right here, this thing. And in order to see the arteries and veins, I'm actually going to remove it. It's one of the things that you can sort of get rid of here so that you can expose more of the arteries and veins, which really sort of stand out. So the thymus and the omentum are the two parts that we're actually going to remove today. And 
I'm going to start looking in here and exposing, without tearing, arteries and veins. And what I'm going to start to discover, and I'm going to let you do this, that I'm going to find the aorta, I'm going to find the subclavian, I'm going to find jugular veins, I'm going to find carotid arteries, I'm going to find all of that stuff up in here. And I'm not going to identify them for you now. I want you to go through and find them. But I'm just sort of showing you the location. You're going to want to remove the thymus. And then you're going to want to sort of get under here and probe and free them up and try to identify what's what by their positioning and where they go. Okay? Cool. And you can really get nice here. And I'm just probing all that clear stuff away. There's days when you want to be brutal. There's days when you want to be a little t more tender with it so you don't rip things. And so I'm just coaxing it apart. Here, that's not, I don't need that. Okay? And then I should be able to get in and use my diagrams and try and discover a lot of the arteries and veins. Oh, I just made a mistake. That's okay. Okay? All right. And then I'll let you go through and do the rest of the ID. Great. Okay? Any questions? Let's get on.